I am the salvation of my people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord for ever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. My brothers and sisters, we continue our journey through Lent, preparing ourselves to re greet the risen Christ at Easter. Let us then, as this period of preparation unfolds in our lives, offer to our loving Saviour those times when we have fallen away from him, those times when our thoughts, words and actions have let us down and we have fallen into sin. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Create in me a new heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. And bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And so let us pray. We implore your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever closer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly towards the worthy celebration of the Paschal Mystery. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Oh, hello folks. Uh, good evening. How are you? A strange few days. Wind, rain, wind, sunshine, wind, cold, everything really. Uh, <laughs> never mind. It keeps on our toes, won't it? Uh, that's here in Plymouth. I don't know what you're uh, suffering of, suffering from, or maybe not around the world. I hope uh, maybe down under where we are at the moment. Uh, it's August, so it's autumn, so it's beginning to uh, get a bit uh, cooler. I think we match up about now. I think something like that. Uh, or if you're the other side of the Atlantic, uh, well, you've uh, got the same as us, I think. Oh, well, crazy weather. Well, that's enough about the weather. <laughs> let's uh, let's look at the scriptures tonight. Let's look at the gospel. I'm losing. I'm losing the plot today. Really, I'm losing the plot. It's a busy day. Right. Uh, let's uh, see what we have have, have got uh, today. We are in John's gospel. We've had a couple of weeks where we've jumped out of Mark, as it were, into John because, to be quite honest, we need to find. Um, we need, we need to find some more things out about Jesus um, as he is going to the cross. So we are on uh, John chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. Uh, and if you've uh, got that that's uh, accompanying this uh, email, well, the, the, the um, link, uh, there it is on there, just inside uh, there. There we are. Uh, or it is on page 864 of the Bibles, the NRSV Pew Bibles that we use in St. Bart's or Find it in your Bible, wherever it may be. Um, let's see then what we've got. And we'll pick it apart with our, our standard formula, which is who's in it, where is it happening, when is it taking place, what is happening verse by verse, why is the Gospel writer included in the passage, and wherefore, what's he got to do with us? Well, let's see what we go. Let's read through it and um, see what the story says. Okay. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Oh, 
John's Gospel. There we go. Isn't it funny when we jump back to John's Gospel after being in Mark for Matthew, Luke, you know. Um, here we go, John's Gospel. So the first question I always ask you is, uh, did you like it? You know, what do you reckon? How does it feel? Um, did you pick up anything new? Did it inspire you? Did it scare you? Did it confuse you? Um, whatever you feel, it's always the, the, uh, the most important place, I would suggest, starting with the Scriptures. Now there to stir us up. Now there to either intrigue us, help us, comfort us, or help, or, or, or whatever we need, we can find something. So I don't know. First, you've got to think: How do you just respond and feel about what we've just heard? Well, you can answer that. Uh, I have to say, I've, I've, I, I, I hear that, and I, I hear Christmas. Hmm. I hear Christmas a little bit. I don't know. Let's see what we go. So what's that, what's that all about? So let's pick it apart first. Let's find out who is in the passage. Well, uh, we have to have a quick look at the Bible just to get a, a verse or two ahead of that one. Um, three, four, well, the person saying it's Jesus, as I've just said to you, uh, and there is no one else in, contained in the passage. What have we got there? We've got some characters, I suppose. We've got uh, Jesus is speaking this, but what we've got in the passage, we've got Moses, Moses, oh Moses, the great Moses, the one that set, led the people from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land, but not quite, he didn't quite get it there himself. Uh, Moses, the great figure played by, um, I don't know, whatever, I was about to say Charlton Esson, I don't know what I'm on about, but uh, Moses that is the towering figure, towering figure of the Judaic faith of, of our Ab uh, Abrahamic Four bells affairs. It's very, very important. Uh, so what have we got? Um, uh, got Moses is the great one. Uh, so when we hear that, we know it's important. The serpent in the wilderness. Well, that's from a story. We'll find out about that later. Son of man. The description of the son of man. That's that one I find awkward. It's, Jesus, it's a description of Jesus describing himself. Of the son of man. Very awkward. I'll find that one. We'll get back to that in a minute. What else have we got there? It's verse 16. God. Well, then we work that one out, can't we? Yep. Behind everything, in, in, in all and through all. Um, without him, we don't exist. Uh, what else have we got? Um, and then we've got some figures at the bottom. People who love darkness and people and those. We've got... Uh, it's referring to just people. Humans. All of us lot. It's very interesting. So, uh, not a lot of people in this passage. Um, so, let's work out... Uh, where is it happening? Where, we've got a geographical location. And then do that by having a good old route around in here and see if you can find something. Where well, we had, uh, if we look a bit earlier on, Jesus has cleansed the temple. Nicodemus uh, has come to see Jesus at night. So Nicodemus, a Pharisee. So I presume where we we must still be in Jerusalem, around Jerusalem. I reckon we are. Or we might be up the road in Bethany, just outside, with Mary, Martha and Lazarus, his old friends. Um, but we're certainly in and around Jerusalem. Uh, and so when is it happening? Now, weird, isn't it? We are John's Gospel. Remember this, John's Gospel, very weird. John's Gospel does not have all nice shepherds and angels and wise men and all that stuff. You have, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, but the Word God's God, the Word, the Word, all that lot. Yeah? Uh, we start at the beginning of time in John's Gospel, <coughs> we rock it through to John the Baptist, um, and then we have Jesus appears, uh, the Lamb of God, and then we collect up the disciples. Jesus uh, calls some some uh, Philip and Nathaniel, some more apostles. Then he goes to a wedding in Cana, and he goes and trashes the temple, which is we had last week. And then Nicodemus comes to visit Jesus shortly after, say, so, "What are you on about, son? This is interesting. I think there's something going on right here." Uh, and then this happens. So we are right at the very beginning of John's Gospel. Remember though, remember, remember, put the brakes on before you get confused. John's Gospel is not the narrative Gospels of the others. It is not the sequential narrative Gospel. It's not there to simply say it happily went here, 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 here. John's Gospel is a different um, reason to exist altogether. The last thing we needed was four Gospels telling the, the same story. Three is certainly enough. Um, John's Gospel is coming to try and talk to us about something different. 
keep that in mind and let's go for what's happening verse by verse. I hope you're still with me. Hang in there. I know it's John. Don't worry. We'll be fine. I'll look after you. There we go. So Jesus said, it's after Nicodemus has been there uh, and he's obviously speaking to them in the crowd, the crowd there. Um, he said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up. Serpent in the wilderness, you go right back um, into Exodus, uh, the great uh, the journey of freedom. And one of the things that uh, Moses did, uh, get me, got to get this right now because I haven't, I haven't cribbed it to make sure I get it right. And I'm not the Old Testament expert. I'm not really an expert in anything really, but I prefer Gospels. I can cope with those. Um, it's about the staff and, 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 um, uh, and, and the staff become a serpent and he picks the serpent up becomes the staff, which is strong. Um, so we've got, um, it starts off with just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. And we remember that with the healing thing, with the staff and the serpent around it for Luke, uh, the healer. So as a picture starts off here that, we, that the, um, we're trying to describe what the, the Messiah is for. So you hear that and you know that's a great thing. That's, again, a bit supernatural. But this idea that the people were recovered by Moses leading them and healed in a, in a way. So the Son of Man must be lifted up. That's very interesting, isn't it? So the Son of Man must be lifted up. This idea that to pick up the staff that leads the people to freedom. So the Son of Man, who is lying on the ground, as it were, a bit like the serpent, I suppose. Um, it's a great picture here. The Son of Man is brought low. Brought low by what? Well, Jesus is brought low by, not himself, but by us, because he literally takes the weight of the world on his shoulders, as it were, the phrase is. You know, that's why he goes to the cross. He, he, he takes all our sins on board and they pff, collapse him down. And it's an interesting picture, isn't it? A very powerful picture. So just as the uh, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness and it went from something which is appalling to something freeing and healing, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, something to lift up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. This is not just the Messiah making things better. He's giving us something through that healing, something deeper. And you can see what I mean about John. We are trying to understand Jesus is, through the words of Jesus in John's Gospel, John um, uses Jesus to explain to us. That's why these things don't appear in many of these things don't appear in other gospels, not in these ways. John, John, as I said before, the Guinness Gospel. If any of you remember the Guinness Sermon from over the years, if you haven't had it, well, maybe listen in next Christmas. I'll do the Guinness Sermon again. <laughs> um, John's Gospel is it's got all the bits and pieces, all the little stuff about it. it's got all the ingredients of Jesus. You know, and 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 he's pulling out the bits that can describe why Jesus has done what he has done and what he is doing what he is doing so um jesus is almost predicting the reason he's giving them the reason behind him being with us so that the idea that he must be lifted up and that all you believe in him may have eternal life that there is something going to happen something that's going to happen then verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life here we go. That's very interesting. I'm going to reach over there, all the way over there, and just see if I can have a quick cross-reference on that one because um, it's a very powerful phrase. It, as, again, do you remember I said earlier on, it, it might, makes me think a bit about Christmas, this idea of, of the world and God um, uh, and, and there's a sense of all this love stuff going on and, and there's a great purpose which is almost timeless. Let's just see if I can quickly pick on that one um, if it gives me a time uh, the serpent blah, 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 da, 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 I'm cheating for you it makes me sound really good um, it is basically a um, I thought as much um, it is the sense of this is almost like a refrain in John's gospel it will return every other couple of chapters whilst Jesus is teaching. This idea that the Son and God, the two, are the portal, the are the way for believers to go onward. 
and that you need to believe in the sun and God. That's what makes it work. Okay? Now, that's all right. For you and I, we know what the sun looks like. We don't know what God looks like. But if you can believe in the sun, then, you got, then God goes hand in hand. Because they are the same thing. Um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And there's this sacrificial nature that we have that we'll come, we'll come towards that, I'm pretty sure, as we come up to a Good Friday. This sense of the sacrificial nature of God giving the son, giving himself out. Remember Isaac and uh, Abraham and Isaac, where God, where Abraham responds to God's call to give the son. But now we have God himself pouring out himself, as it were, in Christ. Um, to everyone who believes in him may not perish for eternal life. There it is. There's the refrain. That's the one that's going to happen. That is the gift. That is the reward for reading the whole of John's Gospel in one go. No, I kid not. For trying to follow Christ as well or not well, as, as well as you can, as well as you can try it out. Right, it's verse 17. Already got there so far. Indeed, Jesus said. God did not send the Son into the world, condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Here we go, that God and the Son uh, are one. They're constantly hammering this point home. But saved, saved but the world. It's very interesting use of the word. It doesn't use the people. It doesn't use Israel, which is a collective name for the, uh, for the Jewish um, faith. Um, he uses the world. John really kind of pushes it out a little bit. This is why we see that John is written so much later, after all the other stuff has been written, the, the, the synoptic gospels, the letters from Paul and Peter, and, and those letters, the Acts of the Apostles. Um, maybe even Revelation by then? Who knows? But certainly there is this sense that John's gospel is like looking back into all of the stuff about Jesus and just trying to say, aha! Can you not see now why? And this idea that God and the Son, they don't, he says, came to the world. Um, it's deeper than just the Holy Land. It's, it's for the world, for all of us. Um, you don't say to condemn that from the beginning, for, from the beginning, he wanted to make us better. He wanted to recover us, to free us. Verse 18, those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. But it does come with a little bit of a warning, health warning. John's Gospel does come with a health warning. Not as bad as Matthew's Gospel, I'll give you that. Matthew's Gospel is pretty scary at times and very up, you know, it can be hurt you in or you're out. But it says those who believe in him are not, are, are not condemned. It's interesting that those who've taken them already, so not necessarily the people of God, the Jewish Israel, the Jewish people, they're, they're condemned if they believe in him, if they take the Messiah on board. Um, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Very interesting. That, that's, again, that retrospective feel of John's Gospel. Is looking back. By now, there are new believers. There are new. There are new churches springing up across the Mediterranean and elsewhere. Um, that Gentiles are now part of the the church. The church is the, you know, the Christianity is a faith for all, uh, and so it's a case of yeah, drawing them in. But you know, are we? You know, the other thing is like, it's always a little bit of John's gospel. Says, so, all right, Jesus is coming into the. To, to 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 head towards Calvary and resurrection, but also you can you can almost sometimes pick the whole thing up, move it over, and jump drop it in to end of time. But again, remember this: if you put those in the end of time, Jesus is going to come at the end of time to save the world. And really, at that point, it's really good if you've tried to engage with it. But that's better. Oh dear! To keep going, twenty minutes, too much already. Let's f let's fly on. Um, and this is the judgment, that, that the light has come into the world, and the people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Okay? Remember that bit that, that right at the beginning of John's Gospel? The light, the word was light. Um, um, uh, he was in the world, the world knew him, the world did not know him. He came to his own, his own people did not receive him, blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, and then we've got uh, the light shines in the darkness, the great Christmas proclamation of John's Gospel. So we're kind of looking back to that. And I think it's interesting that we're reflecting already in John's Gospel on what has happened. 
So, uh, and this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. The Messiah has been here. And the world and the people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Well, we know that because they tried to extinguish him. Um, and if they are capable of trying to extinguish the Messiah, who is God, whom they should know, mankind has an appalling ability to try and extinguish the truth, the light, at any other time. And we still do it now. For all, verse 20, for all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. Ooh, yeah, uh -huh. okay. I think there's one word that sums all of that up, doesn't it? Guilt. Yeah. I know I'm sitting here with some. I'm sure you've got a bit, bit there as well. It's a uh, human condition which is... Um, on the one hand, it's quite good, it's quite well, it's quite necessary, that's a better word, it's a necessary thing, without guilt we have a problem. But on the other hand, it can be something which we feel we are unable to move from. Well, we're going to read further on, you know, if you carry on reading, you'll find out there was lots of stuff about being saved and repentance. We mean, remember John's call, repent, make straight the paths of the Lord, you know, Place yourself before him. And my goodness me, um, that is something. We want to hide away from it, you know, lock the things away. It's quite easy to deal with. Just gird up your gird up your loins, take a deep breath and get a confession. I've never said it that bluntly before, but that is true. Then that verse stops having an effect. But there it is. That's our human condition, that we hide and shrink away from when we fall away and we don't want to know. Verse 21, but those who do what is true, and that can be anyway, you know, that's, that's not just about taking money, uh, food to the food bank, but doing what is true, that is following the right path, making the right decisions, struggling with wrong and struggling with doing right um, uh, and, and trying to accept what God calls you to do um, taking the path which you feel you can't take, all kinds of stuff that we just try and adjust to. So, if what is true, and give God a go, and all those other things uh, come to the light. Remember that, remember that one we talks about the light? Don't put it under the bushel, what good is that? Put it up where everyone can see, and it can help. So that it may clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Now, I do, I've got a real feeling, and it really sits on me, this one. Now, I just said earlier on, but this might be the wrong way around. This might be the beginning of the gospel. This might be about Jesus coming into the world heading of, at his birth. I think it's got a thing about the end. I think this is also about the end of end of time. Uh, that, that we're seeing a reflection in Christ. I can't remember which way we are now. A reflection in Christ's birth. And God's decision to save us is going to be repeated and fulfilled when finally he comes to redeem all who give him a go. And that's the whole thing. That's, that, that's it in a way. That's, that's what John is trying to draw out. And of course we will then hear lots uh, about John explaining why he... Well, you know, it, it, sorry, we'll hear lots of, in, in John's Gospel of Jesus explaining why he's doing it. And it's because that extraordinary phrase in verse 16 which is almost the refrain that we should have in life that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life that he comes to draw us back whoa wow why is the gospel right including this passage I think I've just answered that one there a little bit moved on to that and very much in John's gospel that why it is is the theme of John's gospel. Why did Jesus do that? Why did Jesus bother? Why did God bother? Well, because ultimately God so loved the world, and that's you, um, and all whom you know, and all who you don't know. Um, he, he comes because he loves them. God's got more love than any of us can credit or even imagine. So don't worry about it. You know, it's quite a lot of it knocking about. There you go. All you need is love. And that's the. Haha, <laughs> that's the one for John's Gospel. Wherefore, what's it got to do with us? Now, I have to say, sometimes when we read in the other Gospels and we have a story and we have a hero and a villain and we have a, a victim or we have um, someone that's been saved 
Uh, we have great miracles. We have apostles messing up with. We have all characters and stuff like that. Sometimes it's easy to say, well, actually, I, I like that bloke, that person's, I'll get that person, I'll get that, and I feel like that, I feel like this. But in John's Gospel, this is always a difficult one to ask, that last W. Wherefore, what's it got to do with us? Because, in many ways, it leaves it quite open-ended. Um, because it kind of, John's Gospel here, and in many parts of John's Gospel, it's kind of asking you to just pause and consider that God so loved the world that he had sent his, he gave his only son so everyone believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life and that is for you and you might find wherefore what's it got to do with us um, might, sometimes you might feel that that isn't really you're not really worth it I'd say it that God doesn't think that God thinks the opposite to be caught on it all, at all times so if you think it you're wasting your time <laughs> he does think you're worth it you might think that maybe you might be just getting on a little bit. You might, yeah, you might crack the nut a little bit there, and you know, maybe, yeah, it's going to work out a little bit. You might think I'm not quite sure what to do next. Well, I might read on, see what he talks about, see what he does. John's gospel is that magical gospel to stir us up, to make us think, and to ask the question: Why did he come? Well, because he loves us and he wants to save us. And it didn't get much better than that, really. I think. Even now, with all the stuff going on in our world, and when it, life seems so fragile and and uh, weak, he's loving us. And all those that have gone from this world over this last year can come to experience something greater. Thank goodness for that. Imagine the last year without that. Yikes. Okay, there we go. On that glorious note, <laughs> yeah, it's a glorious note. Peace be with you, and also with you. Bless you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands and made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. Cleanse your people, Lord, we pray, from every taint of wickedness, that their gifts may be pleasing to you, and do not let them cling to false joys, for you promised them the rewards of your truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give him thanks and praise. It is always right, truly right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sec sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to rather hold to the things that eternally endure. So with the, all, all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of your, of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Jonathan, Robert, Nick, our bishops, your clergy, and all your people, whom you call to your service. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostles, Bartholomew, Mark, Anne, Mary of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. The Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Can you say the word and I shall be healed? lay down your precepts to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm in keeping your statutes. So let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with the sacrament, that they may come to possess your salvation, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.